Howdy gentle humans, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Diana Chu here at Slow Gaze. We are going to do a little bit of a get ready with me. I'm gonna talk through my absolute favorites from this month, meaning this is stuff that I reach for basically every single day. Things that have been a game changer for me from literally toe to head. Do people say that? Nose to toes. Let's just go with that. From nose to toes, um, a little bit in between too. I have a handbag pick for you. I have all types of goodies. We'll put the makeup on. We'll just chit chat and catch up. I'm hoping that you're doing well. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I would really love to see you here again. And let's get right into it. Favorites. It's nice to do a little check-in of what I'm enjoying this month. It's really a rolling thing of what I'm enjoying just in general. It's not like I compartmentalize my life into months. So this is stuff that I've been kind of carrying around and using every day. I'm gonna start with some really quick like body things, fragrance, and even a little handbag obsession that I've had. And then we're gonna go into the makeup and then I'll wrap it up. How does that sound? So I hope everyone is doing really well. The first thing I'm gonna mention is some foot cream. It's serious business in the summer, especially if you have been outdoors like I have. Um, I've been enjoying my Tevas, getting super muddy on hiking trails up in Door County, Wisconsin. Also really locally, I'm headed to Montana as safely as I can possibly be. Um, so when this video goes live, I'm actually probably gonna be up in big sky country, but this is like the saving grace of my foot care routine, anything between, actually I don't have it with me now, but it's the Bare Hands Dry Gloss Manicure. And I've linked it all down below, um, but basically I've kind of eschewed wearing nail polish. And sorry, my nails are so ragged and disgusting, it's because I've been gardening, but I've just been like buffing them to a really beautiful shine, slathering this on. This smells like coconut, it's by Burt's Bees. It smells like coconut and it has a slight peppermint tingle and it really just soaks in. It just is my lifesaver. And then for deodorant, I've been enjoying this Maison um, Louis Marie number no. four Bois de Balancourt. This is basically the general fragrance that you might have seen in candle form. They do have like a oil, it's largely unisex um, or ungendered, but I think it's targeted maybe more towards men. I used to work with someone who loved the scent and would literally burn candles and have all the crystals in the world in her office and just let it waft through the entire fourth floor of our building. Um, I thought it was a pretty magical scent and so that got me a little bit more obsessed with this, but they recently came out um, with a deodorant and this was found on credobeauty.com. It's just one of those natural things and it works pretty well. If you like the scent, I'd recommend it. And this is not really a... <laughs> complimentary pair, I would say. This is gonna be my fragrance choice that I wanna talk about, but they work all right. Like this is a bit more woody. This is very much a modern gourmand or before the idea of a gourmand or a fragrance that smells like delicious yummy cakes came onto the scene. I'm thinking also of the Mason Margiela by the fireplace. That smells like chestnuts and caramel and like burnt s'mores. This is the most sophisticated fragrance that I have really come across it. I thought it was going to be a Tom Ford pick, like I was going to live in Tom Ford for the most part, but then I found out, of course, Frederick Malm is a perfume additioner. He's like a perfume publisher. If you don't know much about Frederick Malm, that's kind of what you're seeing here in the monogram. Frederick Malm, Eau de Parfume, and um, he is a publisher, meaning he goes out and finds really significant noses and people who have developed their craft for creating memorable, amazing scents and publishes them for them. So like gives them no timeline, no budget, just says make the best you can. And this man, Maurice Roussel, he created this Musk Ravager. I can't pronounce it. I should probably look it up. I hate it when a YouTuber says, oh, I am not even going to try. I'm going to butcher it. Well, you should at least try. You can still butcher it, but at least you will try and maybe next time you won't but butcher it. So let's, let's look this up. You're going to really enjoy this part of the film. I'm sure. Do you like my little Vita Soy lemon tea phone case? <laughs> that was sexy. 
Travageur. So this is the fragrance of my dreams. It is literally, it tastes yummy. Like it smells like I'm going to be eaten by anyone that smells me. It does have a very initial powderiness that I was like scared about. But the minute it hits my skin, it just envelops me in this gorgeous caramel shroud. And I feel like my skin is reacting to it. I feel like I'm more feminine than I usually am. I'm, I'm really attracted to cinnamon and leather and clove and masculine scents, woody ones, smoky ones. But then I always have a soft spot for um, really gourmand, tasty flavors. And this one makes me feel like I'm actually me. So it hits that note of just me coming alive. I don't feel like I have to be too androgynous. It just is my scent. I don't know how else to put it, but if you can get a sample of this and smell it, I, I highly recommend it. I recommend this over Tom Ford's um, tobacco, is it tobacco veni or veni fatale? Both of those. Those are too like on the nose or they feel a little bit too floral or too much like horchata. Like I can name exactly what it smells like. This develops, it changes, it's complex, it's um, a little bit brute. <laughs> it has that musk but it also has that uh, pullback. There's a push and pull. It's just a, a really gorgeous fragrance. The only thing I don't love about this is the packaging. Like I love the monogram. I love the way that they are producing it and it comes in a tome or like a box that makes it feel like spines on a book. So you can have bookshelves because of the idea of the perfume publisher. But I kind of wish this wasn't a sticker. Um, if this was somehow inlaid or just Po posted, <laughs> printed on the glass somehow, I would feel like this was a little bit more luxe and I wouldn't have to be delicate with it. I don't actually want to destroy this and I feel like I might just because of the oils on my hands from other things that I'm slathering on my body, like the foot cream. So top pick, I don't even care if it's not a summer or winter scent. I've been reading a lot about this. A lot of people say it's only appropriate for people who are over 30, like over 30 and you can really wear it. Of course, that's a very arbitrary number um, and a very privileged <laughs> thing to say. However, I have to agree with a little part of that feeling like I'm finally able to wear certain makeup and clothing and bags and whatnot that feel like my skin has matured enough just to have that much more character and for me to carry myself in a certain way. And like this does fit in my lifestyle right now. And I'm very excited about it. So those are my like main not makeup picks. Uh, the thing that I really wanted to bring you to see today is this little friend. I don't really name my bags. I find it slightly off-putting personally. I don't care if you call your handbags Judith, Todd, or you know, anything Marcel Proust. Plus she already has a name because she was named after Jodie Foster. So this is the mini Jodie bag by Bottega Veneta, of course, in the Entrecciato, and this is the color sandalwood. This is not the almond color. I just wanna make that really clear. It's also the first generation of bags. I didn't know this until very recently, but Bottega just changed the silhouette of their mini Jodi. Vertices here are actually like dipped in so that they look more like this, a little bit more like a dumpling circle shape when held um, versus this croissant shape where you see it mostly like very boxy at the bottom and then a circular handle. You can also see that I am not babying this at all. After a while, I realized that this is exactly the size that I want. I love clutches. I actually really enjoy holding and handling my bags and not using handles. And the fact that this has its own little handle, the fact that it gets slouchier over time, it's just a really, really special bag. Yes, people say that the weave is a little bit looser. Um, I think it makes it more modern. This also fits a lot more than you think. So I did open her up, keep in my wallet. I have like a little coin purse, a mask, a tampon, um, a charger. I also have like a little trinket for protection that my old roommate used to, he gifted this to me. I think it's a Native American symbol for either a bear. I think it's a bear and it says protection on the back. So I keep that around with me. And the biggest surprise is this. Um, this is just a brass egg. It's a decorative object but I literally keep it in here. Otherwise the bag, when I hold it, looks like this. 
and I don't want it to. I want it to stretch out, like deliberately stretching out new jeans. I want it to have that beautiful slouch. And honestly, putting like your phone, your wallet, normal everyday objects, keys, whatnot, it doesn't do that. It takes a long, long time. See, even with two pieces of um, fairly substantial like objects in here, it still holds its shape. So it does take a little while and I'm just helping it along with this brass egg. Anyway, that's my <laughs> little favorite that maybe coming out of left field for a few of you. Um, let's get into the makeup. So I realize I don't have anything that's really big in front of me as, as a mirror. So I'm gonna use this tiny little mirror um, as I go. But one of my favorite, favorite combs and one of my everyday rituals still starts with my hair. I pop out of the shower. I put on a little bit of lush leave-in conditioner. Right now I'm using like a flavor called Revive and it's a little sagey, a little bit citrusy, and then I like comb through it and make my middle part, which is a little bit messy right now, but I make my middle part with this acrylic winded comb. My mom just visited recently and she actually helped me cut my hair for the first time in my entire life. She said she's never cut anybody's hair before <laughs> and I'm an only child, so this is like wonderful like a little bonding experience for both of us. And my hair being so straight, it doesn't need too much help. It just needs like to know where to go. And this is great because the comb tooth is not too thin. I don't feel like with wet hair, I'm gonna break a lot of my follicles. No, my hair, yeah. And it just fits really nicely. I just wipe it off after it's done and then I pop it into my makeup bag. Next, I would go in with this favorite, my SPF favorite. This is the Glow Screen by Supergoop, 40 SPF. I like it because it's one of those multitaskers. I don't have to worry about putting too much highlighter on, even though I still enjoy doing that. Um, I feel like I can really just put this on and then I have another base that adds to the glow that I'm looking for, especially during the summer. I feel good having this on. So I am just smoothing and then I am pressing. Yeah, that's great. I feel protected, I feel moisturized. That's a really good base for my makeup. I've also not been doing so much skincare. I've been trying to like let my normal oils and my general pH mantle and all the good stuff just be and live um, and find its own equilibrium. It's been working all right. I'm still getting some like a little bit of stress break gouts and such, but that's gonna be how I am. Next, I'm going in with my favorite, and I did mention it in my last video, which was a entire show and tell of my whole makeup collection, plus a mini declutter at the end. If you wanted to see it, I have linked it down below, but this is the Vital Skin Foundation Stick by Westman Atelier. I mentioned this before a couple times, but it's worth repeating this because it's compared so much to the Merit Beauty little concealer foundation stick. This actually is a better value for your money per gram. If you actually whip out the calculator or do your mental arithmetic, um, I just want to mention that because we're just so easy to assume certain brands that come on the scene, especially like Westman Atelier. I remember being like, whoop, these are ridiculous prices. I can't afford, nor do I want to afford uh, buying this all in one go in one stick for this amount of money. Um, I have since eaten my words and I really, really like this. I will be traveling with this kit and this exact foundation to Montana. And I feel a little bit better putting this stuff on on top of a blemish. I don't feel like I'm just going to completely destroy my face by putting more makeup on top. Um, somehow I trust this and maybe I shouldn't, but because it's clean beauty by standards that I believe in, I feel really good about this stuff. So let's move on. I'm so excited. I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's my two year anniversary, wedding anniversary today. Um, my partner Ben and I are deeply in love, deeply devoted to each other. No, it's, I mean, it's a good thing. We're in a stable thing and I'm so happy and grateful. Now I'm going in with the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer and Deep Bronzer. Single brush that I've just been using for everything. This is the Lottie London brush. It is LF015. LMFAO. What I was saying was it's really difficult during the pandemic to keep up with relationships, no matter who they are, work, coworkers, friendships, 
family, um, let alone people who are dating or in not so stable situations. So I'm really, really just so fortunate to be with another healthy and happy individual who is, I mean, he's dealing with his own stuff, but we've been able to spend more time together um, and enjoy each other's presence and we're homebodies and we've been cooking and we're gonna go out tonight, um, eat outdoors safely at a very local Italian restaurant. It just so happens that there's one of our favorite restaurants in Milwaukee called Tenuda's right next door. We can just literally walk to it or bike to it and that's what we're gonna do. So that is that. I think it's a great scent memory for me. And again, this brush does such wonders. I can put it down and trace my cheekbone with it and then turn it 30 times 30 degrees, 90 degrees, and then literally just blend it out that way. And I think this helps me get a little bit more, not just sun look, right? Not just a summery look, but it actually like sculpts my cheeks and I don't need contouring. I just need that, <laughs> the butter bronzer. I'm going to move into eyes and I'll show you why I don't just finish up the cheeks because I do have one more cheek product. Now we're gonna go into some more Westman Atelier and I have her two iPods. This is in the shade Chocolat and this is in Noir. And why can't we buy these separately? I am so, so, so like peeved by it. <laughs> A little bit disappointed, honestly. And this is Chocolat on my ring finger. I just don't, I don't understand. I know it's probably a decision, both artistic, um, because she wants to be able to curate certain looks and whatnot, color stories, I get it. But for an $88 thing, like I really think people should be able to divide and conquer eyeshadows, especially if they are basically single eyeshadows that are supposed to work in a system magnetically. You should be able to buy any of them and pop them all on top of each other. And I mean, Trini London does it. So many brands do this. Our jet, Hourglass just came out with singles in an elegant way. I just, I don't understand. So I had to buy, literally buy both. Anyway, rant over. Chocolat gives me a really burnt bronze, slightly red toned. I think it's working super well. And then I just go in with the same finger, touching lightly on that black, the noir flavor and going on top to make it even smokier and what I found what is mixing this like charcoaly mud onto my eyes I do like how smooth it goes and it really does stay if I go in with a little bit of this so this is the hourglass ambient gosh I always try to say ambiance but it's ambient Hourglass Ambient Strobe Lightning Lighting Brush. <laughs> this is so hard. Ambient Strobe Lighting Blush in Brilliant Nude by Hourglass. I go in with the same finger and I grab a little bit of that and then I just veil it on top and it just sets everything in. And what I love is that once I put this on my cheeks, it also speaks the same language and I get basically everything almost in a monochrome way. Okay, then going back in with the Lottie brush and picking up the Brilliant Nude, and then that goes onto my cheeks like blush, but also like highlighter, because it's one of those Brilliant Nude styles. And it just, look at that. It's just so golden and so delicious. Um, I'm really not shy about it because I think for summer, I can get away with a little bit more flair. So yeah, just really love that. And then I'm not over with my skin. <laughs> I'm gonna go in with the Jones Road Miracle Balm. This is in the Dusty Rose shade. You might know this product. <laughs> um, and if you don't, they have to, they say like, break the seal and then you can use it. But lo and behold, you actually have to break the seal every single time as you go. It's just this very hard goop. If you think of, um, coconut oil at room temperature. It's basically like that, but a little bit more compressed. So you basically have to like scrape it out each time. But what I'm doing is I'm just literally putting it in my palms, scooching it around. Yeah, they're a little bit pink, but then I'm going to like roll it onto my cheeks 
and right under my eyes, basically. And then I'm going to reactivate it with my hands. And then I'm just going to pat it onto the rest of my face because this gives like a uniformity of glass skin looking to my face, but it's highlighting the cheeks. Also with the hourglass strobing powders, I've discovered that after putting those on and then activating with it with like a rose water spray or even just some like distilled water, you could use fixative. It just blankets the powders and activates them in a way that's even more filtered. Like that's the ultimate oomph that I need and it stays put. So this is kind of like that, but using a balm. <laughs> and I've really been enjoying this combo, especially since this is a little bit pink and it's giving me a rosiness. This is a little bit um, peachy slash amber. And together they give me this like really gorgeous, almost sweaty look that I happen to like, especially coming from Hong Kong. It was hot, still is hot, but whilst living there, it was so hot and so humid. And I had really good skin in some ways. Obviously I was a teenager going through some stuff. You're gonna have skin issues if you were me, but also just in the heat, in the humidity, it's gonna give you a beautiful sheen like this. So I associate it with um, a really healthy vibe. Next, I'm going in with the Brow Lift Brow Pencil by Charlotte Tilbury. This is in the shade Black Brown. And it does have a tip that's refillable, which I appreciate. I'm trying to have like a much lighter hand than usual with my brows. I'm really trying to wear my natural face more. And unfortunately, like darker brows just isn't natural for me. So no matter how much I want that look, I just have to tamp it back like 20% more than I usually would go for. So I do that by using the spoolie end and really dragging it out and fluffing it out. This spoolie is super stiff. Like it's, you can hear it just scraping <laughs> like sandpaper against my skin, but it really helps to differentiate those lines and make this look even more natural. Thank you, Charlotte, always. Now, I think a couple more things and that's basically it. I have the Merit Beauty Brow Pomade in Black Brown. I love this so much because it deposits just the right amount of pomade and it doesn't get messy. It doesn't get everywhere. It's not tinting my skin. I don't have to worry about really anything as I'm just fluffing my brows and shaping them. I am gonna repurchase this when I run out. The only thing that I get slightly confused by is like, look at this compared to um, mascara. Um, I always think that this is the wand and this is the actual cartridge when actually this is reversed, inverted. So the wand you have a lot longer to hold, but the product actually lives in this much smaller cartridge. Nothing but a little bit of learning. It's not a deal breaker, obviously, but it's slightly misleading. You can find it in your bag easier because it's taller but I'm wondering how good this is for the environment. Probably not so good. Uh, and it does have a luxe price point. It does have a luxe feeling to it. And I feel like I can control how I'm holding this wand because it's longer. So there are factors that I really enjoy. It's all gold, like it's so nice. But basically I would buy this again, even if it was in a totally crappy package because the product is so, so good. I've returned to this as well. This is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Zero Smudge Lengthening Mascara in black. I've been trying out all of these other clean mascaras. Um, the Ilia one, the Limitless Lash one was my favorite for a long time until it started flaking. And I don't know if it's because the tube that I had was just a little bit old or what the situation is, but I had to stop wearing that basically and look through my collection to see if there were others. Choose your battles, I guess, because this does not smudge, as it says. It does not flake, even on my oily mono lids, even though I just put oil goop on my face again. I just feel really, really good and safe with this mascara. For the lips, I'm gonna go in with my Hourglass Lip Stylo. I think in another video, I called it a lip stylo. This is in the shade Idealist. And look how similar it is to my lip shade. It just gave a little bit of glossiness, a little bit of peachiness, and it 
evens out everything. So I really, really like this stuff. I don't go in with a lip liner. That's it. That's, that's the look. She's really just this easy, easy piece. So that's the look today. I really enjoy, again, just the little lashes, the little baby lashes that I have. Yes, I have some acne scars, but you know, that's going to be a little bit less noticeable if you first see my eyes with that little veil of eyeshadow. It just deepens up and I think adds a little sophistication to my face. Again, I look like I'm sweaty, but it's just, just the best glowing skin that I know will last. Like if this Jones Road Miracle Bomb just kind of gets eaten by my face, which it doesn't usually, but if it just um, goes through the day basically, it will fade a little bit, but I'm still left with the Hourglass, which has a lot of brilliant highlighting little pigments on there. And so I'll still have that beautiful, brilliant sheen. I still have the under layer of the Physician's Formula sculpting the bottom of my cheeks. And then this lip color, if it fades out, again, I can either add on a little bit really quickly, or I'm just gonna look really natural throughout the day. That's that. I think it looks really cute with this little chick, <laughs> this chica. Um, yeah, I don't know, I'm in like a safari mood. I guess you can tell that my little fronds over here have been speaking to you. I finally brought a fan up into this room. Uh, I hope it gives you a little bit of like cute visual ASMR. I have plants growing out of the back of my head here. <laughs> and all my props are in frame. Like I feel like I've finally gotten my space up here to be back in business. I've been struggling for the past three weeks. If you haven't seen some of my Instagram posts, you can find me on Slow Gaze. But I've basically been struggling because of the diagnosis of a few really close family members. And it's just been a little bit dicey. Also, after quitting my job, I would love to do a post, a video on how it's been going, <laughs> what I wish I knew before I quit my job. Hindsight is 2020. I am not a perfect person and I'm learning fast. So I have a lot kind of there to go through. I'm still processing it myself, but back in June, I quit my job and now I'm actually a new person. I feel very much like I detached from a lot of my old learnings. So I'd love to catch you up on that. Yes, so I feel much better in this space. I feel like I'm back. I'm going to try to get back into the rhythm of one post a week on Wednesdays at 11 CST. If you miss me, go on to slowgaze.com. Uh, you can also find me via a newsletter that hops into your inbox maybe twice a month. I really don't spam you with anything. It's more just another way to get to know me. Yeah, I guess that's it. I'm so happy that this video is done versus me filming for three hours and then condensing it into a whole hour of just ranting. That has happened and that usually happens after I'm out of the game and not fil uh, filming a little bit. So I wish you all the best. Please, please, please take care. I hope to see you on my next video. So please subscribe. It really helps my little channel grow if you give this a thumbs up. I know people say it all the time, but it really, really does. So I love ya and take care. Adios.